The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and welcome to the Box Score Breakdown Show, a hoop ball presentation. This episode is brought to you by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. Get some delicious coffee. Taste the Kona difference. Head over to HawaiianIsles.com. You can also find their amazing coffee at Amazon. My name is Adrian Benjamins, and I am joined on this lovely Monday evening by Corbin. Corbin, how are you doing, sir? Hey, Adrian, I'm doing great, and I'm happy to be on. We got a good slate of games on tonight, and, I mean, it's always fun doing the box score breakdown. I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it today. I'm excited, man, to have you on. I think you and I are going to be uh, a team, or the Monday night team going forward. And, Corbin, I'm I'm pretty excited about it, man. Let's, let's get the week started off right, man. Let's get the listeners <laughs> going to start the weeks. And Yes, sir. <laughs> just as you said, man, we got a really good slate of games. And uh, this could go long, man. We've got nine games, so let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into it. But super quick. Anything, uh, did any trades go down that I missed? Anything newsworthy that you think we need to talk about before we jump into the box scores? Nothing that I can think of. Yeah, yeah, no no real NBA news. I mean, the Rockets had their uh, protest of that Spurs game denied. <laughs> that was hilarious. And then we'll get to what happened later on today with the Rockets. But um, that, that was the fun little newsworthy uh, note of the day. Man, we will save that talk for when we get to the Rockets. But, man absolutely ridiculous that they actually uh maybe wanted to replay like the last uh what was it five or six minutes of the game or something like that that is a ridiculous uh request by the rockets and real just real quick i just gotta say man it i I feel like the rockets just come across looking just kind of petty and kind of bad by the whole thing it's like man the refs miss calls all the time some of them are really uh catastrophic to the ending of a game and for them to kind of make a big deal now i mean i do understand this one was a little weird like it's very rare you see a ball go into the hoop come back out and get missed but anyways we'll touch more on it when we get to the rocket side corbin good. let's start with i believe the first game was the los angeles clippers and the indiana pacers uh the clippers getting the victory 110 to 99 i actually thought this was going to be a lot closer because no Kawhi. Leonard second game of back-to-backs load management for Kawhi nothing new there we know that uh we know the story I'm gonna look in on the Clippers side of this game first um I guess I'll start with Paul George so with no Kawhi in this lineup uh Paul George sees a big spike in usage and production and definitely did not let down tonight 36 points one block two steals five assists with nine rebounds He shot 7 of 16 from downtown, 9 of 11 from the line, 10 of 26 from the field. Pretty great game from Paul George. Um, A guy who, even though he's coming off the bench, one of the better options on this team, Montrez Harrell, 26 points with 8 rebounds. He added a block and assist, shot 12 of 22 from the field. Uh, Pat Beverly, this is actually a beautiful game from Pat Beverly you know the scoring's never going to be super high only 11 points but the three steals five assists 12 rebounds added a three just filling it up in a lot of these other categories so you love that if you played uh, Pat Beverly or if he's on your roster Uh, Mo Harkless with eight points and 14 rebounds but he's pretty uh, hard to trust in standard leagues Zubak is getting the start, but only playing 20 minutes. It's Harrell that's the center that you want there. Um, you know, Zubak did have a decent game. 13 points with 8 rebounds, 2 assists, 1 block on 5 of 7 shooting. So, if you deep leaguers, if you're rolling with Zubak, this isn't a bad game from him. Uh, the other guy who's definitely relevant in standard leagues is Lou Williams. Six a, a down game from him, man. Shooting was rough for Lou Will. He definitely uh had trouble shooting the ball. Was only two of nineteen from the field for six points, one block, six assists. So um he'll see better days for sure. Um and then other than that, um 
not really much else to talk about. The rest of these guys, I hope you are not counting on. Again, no Kawhi. Corbin, what are your thoughts on the Clippers? Uh, I mean, you broke it down really well. I, I thought Paul George had a, an amazing night. I mean, especially on the volume um, from three and the conversion rate there. 36 points. I mean, you know you're getting that. But especially on nights that Kawhi is out, which is kind of hard to plan for, except, you know, on the DFS, it, it was a, a great a great showing for him. Uh, Pat Beverly, like you said, just a perfect stat line. Like, wow, the triple, like, it was, it feels like, you know, with the, how impactful his points were, it's almost like if someone's getting a triple double in that position, in my opinion, just because he gives you so much on that side. Yeah. Um, With the rebounding, with the passing that, you know, like you said, he's not going to be a high volume point guy, but that doesn't even matter with everything else that he's bringing. So that's awesome. Um, But aside from that, I'll, I'll swing right on over to the Pacers because uh, you pretty much nailed it. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. So uh, you had um the big guy really for the Pacers, at least points wise, was Malcolm Brogdon. Twenty points, seven of fifteen from the field, two of six from three, uh, four of four from the line, two assists, two steals. Um, really giving you a little bit of everything there. Not too much on the assist front, but I mean he kind of paced the Pacers offensively. <laughs> so we'll take that. Um, next to Bontis Sabonis, who's just been a stud this year. Eighteen points, twenty two rebounds, seven to eighteen from the field. Missed both his threes. Hasn't really been doing too big from out there, but four or six from the free throw line. Uh, to go along with four assists to steal in a block. So, you know, he definitely popped up the points and rebounds there, as he has all season. Um, TJ Warren chipped in with 12 points. Not the greatest night. 2 8 from the field. Uh, really having a down year from 3. 0 uh, 2 from there. 8 and 9 from the line. 8 rebounds as well. 1 steal. But that was really it for him. Uh, Miles Turner? Kind of really rough night for him. In 25 minutes, 5 points and 5 rebounds on 2 and 9 shooting. 1 of 4 from 3. Uh, just just a rough night all together, and I'm not sure you know what that has to do compared to playing with, alongside Sabonis. But I mean, that he definitely um, regressed there. And then Jeremy Lamb, 24 minutes, 12 points, five of 12 from the field, one of four from three, one of five from the line. Kind of uncharacteristically bad for him. Two, four rebounds, and and nothing else really aside from there. And off the bench, I mean, the real big guy, the only guy who really had any value aside from TJ McCollum with eight points. And one assist on three and nine shooting was Doug McDermott, who in 30 minutes got 17 points, six and nine from the field, five of eight from three, six rebounds, and and one turnover. But he was really kind of the key cog off the bench. But um, what do you think on that, Adrian? Really on just analyzing the paces from that fantasy percent? Ooh, fantasy's perspective getting late. <laughs> uh, man, you you covered that nicely, and I gotta say, man, Sabonis is a beast. It just he, you know, there's a small number of guys that flirt with like 2020 games, uh, Clint Capella, Andre Drummond, and Sabonis is like entering that group. And I mean, 22 boards tonight with 18 rebounds, and I got, I mean, with and 18 points. And I gotta say, man, he's really hurting Miles Turner. I mean, Miles Turner, uh, with five boards tonight, it's just. Uh, Sabonis is so aggressive. Miles Turner is a little passive, and Sabonis is really eating off of Miles Turner's plate. And um, man, I wish I was higher on Sabonis. Don't have him in any leagues. Don't have any stock in him. And uh, I, but I, I gotta say, I, I kind of hesitated and faded Miles Turner on draft day when it was announced in the offseason that Sabonis would be starting next to him because I did kind of fear this effect and we've seen in seasons past that Miles Turner is prone to having games like tonight but I do gotta say Mm -hmm. Corbin in a categories league like a roto league Miles Turner still very valuable in that kind of setting. It's just, you know, like I do have Miles Turner in one head to head league. And when you see lines like tonight, man, it's just such a bummer. Such a bummer. It is. And I guess, like you said, it's kind of tight to kind of have a tight fit to have both of them because one is going to see some stats to the other when you have, you know, such a normally good front line. But you're right. All year it's just been rough for Miles. And this was kind of a, a tougher kind of stat line form in general but mm. even then yeah if one's having a great night it's rare that you're going to get both of them doing that and, that and that's kind of tougher fantasy yep all right let's roll over to game two the cleveland cavaliers against the boston celtics i figured this one was going to be a blowout and actually a little bit oh no it was a blowout oh, 110 <laughs> to 88 celtics getting the victory i'm going to check out the cleveland side of this game i'm going to start with uh one of the 
bi- one of the bigger surprises in fantasy, Tristan Thompson. Um, you know, at the beginning of the season when he played well, I didn't believe it. And because uh, I'm so used to Tristan Thompson just being a letdown. And so I didn't pick him up anywhere. <laughs> and I had the opportunity. And now I'm regretting it, Corbin, man. Uh, 17 points, oh, man. 11 rebounds, and assists, a steal. He just looks like, you know, he's locked and loaded as a nice double double guy. Um, eight from 11 from the field, one of seven. Uh, you know, the shooting from the line wasn't great. You know, there's a lot of talk that Kevin Love could be on the move, which could maybe even open up some more usage for Tristan Thompson. So you got to be pretty excited if you have uh, if you picked up Tristan Thompson off the wire. Uh, you know, Colin Sexton yeah. did, did not have it going tonight. Only four of 14 for eight points, three assists, four rebounds. But he should definitely be owned in even standard leagues just for his scoring and uh, for the also the chance that the Cavs really go down in the tank and just unleash their youngsters even more if that's possible. Uh, Kevin Love, uh, again, a rumor of a lot of trades, um, did not have it going either. Only 3 of 12 for 7 points. You know, the Celtics a very good defensive team. Likely the reason why uh, a lot of bad lines here from the from the Cavs. Um, Love did have 10 boards, 1-3, but only 3 of 12 shooting, not great. Uh, Seti Osman, a guy who's kind of been coming on a little bit lately, uh, you know, a very low-end guy. Even in standard leagues, I've seen him in the wire on a, a lot of standard leagues, probably even not worth picking up. And only tonight, 4 points, a steal, and assist, 1 rebound. So back to the low-end thing. Darius Garland, uh, you know, even though this guy's been a little rough to start the season, I do think that as we as the season goes on, he could get better. Um, you know, this is a guy who missed a lot of college last season, uh, didn't really have an off season due to injury, so um, he's really starting slow. But I think this could be a guy around towards the All Star break where he could be a solid value. And you know, tonight only nine points, two assists. Uh, two boards, one three on four of eleven shooting. Man, really rough shooting from a lot of the Cavs here tonight. Jordan Clarkson though with a nice game off the bench, nineteen points, three assists, one steal, three threes on seven of fourteen shooting from the field. He was two of two from the line. Uh, I'd like to mention, you know, Nance definitely uh, not a good game for Larry Nance. Only twenty. 20 minutes, 6 points, 7 boards, 1 assist, but uh, I would definitely stick with Nance, especially again with the chance that Kevin Love could be on the move. Um, Another guy in deeper, deeper leagues, Kevin Porter Jr. has flashed some upside. You know, tonight, not a big scoring night, only 9 points, but this is what I love. 3 steals, 1 block, 2 assists, 2 rebounds. Um, A guy who can kind of fill it up all over the place. And a guy I'm keeping an eye on in deeper leagues. Um, Let's see. Not much else to talk about here. Nobody else that I would trust. Uh, Corbin, any thoughts on the Cavs? Uh, not really. I was pretty pretty well explained. And like you said, if there's any moves um, involving Love, I expect Thompson to get even more kind of – I mean, he already had 36 minutes tonight. More time for more production for him. Um, but he's definitely someone I'm keeping an eye on as the trade deadline comes as a veteran on an expiring contract. So that will be interesting to see. But um, aside from that, I'll just roll on over to the Celtics. Yep. All right. So, I mean, it was well balanced for all the starting five for Boston. So we'll just start with Jalen Brown. 20 points in 32 minutes, 9 of 15 from the – 1 of 5 from the – made his only free throw, 7 rebounds, 2 assists. He's been really solid this year, um, especially coming up the last couple weeks. But in general, I mean, I think it's all about the haircut, but, I mean, that's not any <laughs> fantasy uh, analysis there. It's just one theory. Um, alongside him in the backcourt – or, yeah, in the backcourt this time was Kemba Walker – 22 points in 29 minutes, 8 of 13 from the field, 5 and 9 from 3. Made his only free throw, not getting to line too much, but that's really kind of not his game there. Two rebounds, seven assists, to go along with the block. So, you know, really good production from him. Gordon Hayward, first night back. I would definitely take some time before kind of ushering him back in your lineups, but 14 points in 26 minutes, 7 of 10 from the, from the field. Didn't really find his range from 3, 0 of 2 from there, but it's his first game back. Five rebounds, four assists. I'd give it a couple of games, but I think he'll come back to running to the same form he had just before he went down with the injury. So that'll be interesting to keep an eye on. Um, Daniel Tice, 10 points in 21 minutes, 4-4 four, four from the field, 2-2 two two from 3, 1 rebound, 2 assists, 3 blocks. 
I put him in some in some leagues. I think that um he's gonna split time in that uh big position with Ennis Cantor, but just defensively, I think he adds more value. He'll get more of the edge there. And then finally, just around the closing five, Jason Tatum, 19 points in 30 minutes, seven to 14 from the field, four to six from three. One or two from the free throw line, 11 rebounds. Really good for him to go along with two assists, two steals, and two blocks. So a little bit of everything. And yes, it's Cleveland, but it's good to get the stats stuffed. And that's just what he did. Off the bench, not really a whole lot going on there. Uh, Ennis Cantor, 18 minutes, had seven points, three or five from the field, one or two from the free throw line, four rebounds, one assist. I mean, I expect kind of similar production there. And then aside from that, really not too much going on. Um at all so I'm, I'm gonna run that right back to you adrian what do you think about the celtics in general i mean the celtics in general you nailed it corbin i mean not too much for me to add but i gotta ask you a question you know jalen mm-hmm. jalen brown played well tonight but with gordon hayward back are you a little bit concerned that you know jalen brown's been playing really good really solid uh, are you worried at all that a guy like Brown could take a hit with Hayward and you know I'm, I'm really surprised it's in this first game back Hayward got 26 minutes in a blowout game so uh, I don't think they're really concerned with him uh, you got any concern at all with guys like Tatum or Brown now that Hayward's back or do you think they can all like coexist together you know what that is interesting you're saying that I would really hope that uh, Stevens can kind of find their rotations to match because he's just, Jalen Brown's been playing so well. But you're right. Not only do you have uh, Gordon Hayward back, but he's also been playing so much. I mean, he already played so many minutes. And I think it was, hey, because it is a blow up, let's kind of give him some minutes to really kind of force that run time down. But that is something to keep an eye on. You know what? I'm going to say, yeah, just because you always have to be kind of um, concerned when you have a recurring, a uh, returning star, a star player, a returning main piece to go along with, you know, as we're playing really well and how that will impact the whole starting five in the bench unit. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean toward no for now. I think mm-hmm. it's still gonna get a little bit of time for Hayward to work his way back. And Jalen Brown's been playing so well that I just think you have to kind of keep going with what's working and ease Gordon Hayward in. And and you know what? It was a blowout. I don't see anything unusual with having him play so many minutes because. You just kind of give him that time, and you're playing against a team that you, it was already a blowout. It was already going to be kind of a useless game, kind of fast track him. But aside from that, I'd plead caution. I like that take, Corbin. And, you know, what a great problem to have reality wise a team so i mean they didn't even have marcus smart in this game so uh man the celtics are just loaded playing good um they look great man 17 and 5 record uh it's gonna be really interesting playoff um in the Eastern Conference with teams like the Sixers uh, and the Bucks have been balling. So uh, really exciting time in the NBA right now. Um, all right, let's oh, yeah. let's keep rolling. Let's go over to the next game. I think it was the Sacramento Kings and the Houston Rockets. And man, what a surprise. The Kings getting the victory at Houston, 119 to 118. This was a tight close game i'm gonna look into the sacramento side of this game first i'm gonna start with one of my favorite guys on this team because i picked him up off the wire in a lot of spots rashawn holmes also a hoop ball favorite rashawn holmes 16 points six defensive stats with the two blocks four steals eight rebounds four of seven from the field you know i love that every time i look at rashawn holmes box score he's like six of nine uh four like five of seven like doesn't yeah. kill you from the field goal spot love that how's this eight of eight from the line i mean this guy has been outstanding i think in like nine category leagues he's sitting on the player raider as like a second round value for a guy that you scooped up off the wire now i know a lot of people could be worried about marvin bagley returning i am not worried Yes, maybe Rashawn Holmes does take a little hit because Bagley will be a high usage guy on the offensive end. So maybe we see Holmes' points dip a little bit. But I got to say, man, Holmes is one of the best defender, rim defender, defensive bigs on this team. So I think that's going to keep him on the floor. I think he's going to start at center next to Marvin Bagley. Keep Holmes locked in your lineup. Don't worry about him. Um, 
Corey Joseph had a nice game, 14 points, 6 assists, 2 steals, 3 rebounds, 3 threes on 5 of 11 shooting. I don't really trust Joseph, though. He's been putting up some really low-end lines lately, so um, it's nice to see, but uh, I would not make a move on that. Um, Buddy Heald had a beautiful game tonight, 26 points, 2 steals, 3 assists, Four rebounds, six of 13 from downtown, 10 of 19 from the field. Just a great game from Buddy Heald. Uh, I was able to catch some of the end of this game. He knocked down some big shots down the stretch, too. So uh, really fantastic to see this from him. Uh, another guy who's been kind of coming on, uh, Barnes, 19 points, uh, steal a block, Two assists with eight boards, two threes. Really love the all-around contribution from him tonight. Um, a guy who's been really solid, Nemanja Belica. Now, tonight, outstanding. Last game he had two, by the way, uh, outstanding. 26, uh, I'm sorry, 17 points, three steals, four assists, five boards, three threes on six of 14 shooting from the field. Perfect two of two from the line. You guys, the Belica party might come to an end when Bagley comes back. I think this is the guy who's going to see the biggest hit when Bagley returns. Look, uh, Belitza with 30 minutes tonight, I think this is going to drop down to the low to mid-teens when Bagley returns. So, um, look, I would not drop Belitza. Uh, Bagley, you know, we're not exactly sure when Bagley's going to return. We don't know if they're going to ramp Bagley Bagley back slowly so Belitza could still have some value for a little while but long term wise if you could sell high on Belitza um, I would look to do that um, another guy that I like even though he's coming off the bench uh, Bogdanovich you know 32 minutes off the bench for 13 points one assist three rebounds three threes on five of 11 shooting I feel like he's still a guy worth having in standard leagues um I'm not sure what's going to happen to him when Bagley returns, but you know, in this role playing in the backcourt coming off the bench, he could still see minutes in the high 20s. And I think in that role, he could still definitely be viable. So other than that, not a lot else to talk about. I don't trust Ariza. I don't really trust anyone else off the bench. Um, we're still waiting for Fox to come back, and that could be a little while. So um, that's about all I got. Corbin, what do you think of the Kings? I mean, you broke it down really well. I think we're on it tonight. Uh, I'm really a big fan of Rashawn Holmes and the production he's been giving. And like you said, even with Bagley coming back, there is value for Holmes. Um, and, I mean, with this type of production, why shouldn't there be? Like, that's something else. So I'm impressed. Uh, aside from that, though, not much to add. You already said there's not really a whole lot coming off the bench. For Sacramento, and uh, speaking of not a whole lot, well, actually, that's the opposite here. I'm going to take it down to Houston. Um, and, you know, we'll start with the bench, you know, because we're already talking about him. Um, ben McLemore came up big, 33 minutes. Well, didn't really come up big. He played a lot of minutes, so he played big minutes. 33 minutes, 12 points, 4 13 from the field. Um, coincidentally, all of those shots were from three. So 4 13 from three, four rebounds, four assists, two blocks. And Garrett Clark off the bench as well, 11 points. 3 of 6 from the field, 3 of 5 from 3, 2 of 2 from the free throw line, 3 rebounds, and 2 blocks as well. So you got a little bit of everything from the bench, uh, but I wouldn't really bank on too much of that. Ben McLemore has been up and down, and really most of his value is coming from threes. Gary Clark has been in and out the doghouse as well. Um, for the starting five, I mean, we're going to start with the backcourt where most guys fancy-wise has their uh, players. James Harden, 27 points in 40 minutes, 8 of 19 from the field, 3 of 10 from 3, 8 of 8 from the line, 4 rebounds, 10 assists, was in a block kind of did it all um you know the efficiency is still kind of an issue there uh, at least from three uh, but all in all not really a bad team for him now this guy i'm excited to get to because i have him in a few of my leagues uh, regrettably but russell westbrook came to play gave me a big boost he came with a big game 34 points in 36 minutes very efficient 13 to 17 from the field two or four from three six seven from the line Three rebounds eight assists two steals i mean i watched him in this game and he was really making some high level plays down to stretch to kind of give Houston um, a chance to really win this game with some big timely threes and some great passes so that was good for him and you know what I mean I'm still waiting for him in some maybe not too deep leagues but I mean his efficiency has been awful I'm sure you know you follow the NBA at all you kind of know that but at least this game is an encouraging sign that there is some room to improve if he plays with himself a little bit more Clint Capella 37 minutes 13 points 
five or six from the field, three or six from the free throw line, 17 rebounds. Um, you know, he's giving you some points. He's giving you some rebounds, but really piling up those rebounds. Monster stats there. Daniel House, 11 points in 34 minutes, four or 12 from the field, three or 10 from three, one rebound, two assists. And then P.J. Tucker, who's been so, so steady, came with a monster game. Ten points, not too bad. Four or ten from the field, two or seven from three. But get this, Adrian, 19 rebounds, 16 defensive. And one assist. So, I mean, you know, you're not getting too much in the points there, but he'll give you a decent 10 to 12 points. And those rebounds, man, that is a monster game for him. 19 big ones. But um, what else do you think about these Rockets, Adrian? Man, great, great. First of all, you covered everything there. And, uh, man, P.J. Tucker with the 19 boards. I don't even care about those 10 points when he's uh, giving you production in other areas and you know unusual not to see any defensive stats for PJ Tucker usually he's good for like a steal or a random block and I also love that he gives you some threes now I picked up Daniel House in a bunch of leagues I'm really happy to see him return but uh, I hope he kind of gets going a little bit you know I love that he scored 11 points but shooting not quite there and usually he does a little bit better in like some of these other categories so I'd really love to see Daniel House start rolling because he was hot before he uh, was on that little injury break there. So, um, And then, man, I, I too, Corbin, pretty happy to see this game from Westbrook. You know, I talked to a lot of listeners on Twitter who were really bummed out on Westbrook. Uh, I say I think Westbrook's going to get better as the season goes on. Look, man, he's joining this new team. I think he's still adjusting to – you know, playing on this new team, being in a new system, I think he's going to get better as the year goes on, and uh, I think his value is going to go up. I know he's sitting kind of low in nine category leagues right now, but I think he's going to be good. So I'm really happy to see this game from Westbrook. Outstanding. All right, let's oh, yeah. let's keep going, man. Let's go to the next game. Uh, I think the Orlando Magic and the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, the Bucks getting the victory, one ten to one hundred one. Not a big surprise here that uh, Milwaukee getting the victory at home. Milwaukee is hot right now, man. 21-3. and three. I want to say they're on a 15-game winning streak, but I'm pulling that up off the top of my head, so don't quote me if I'm a little bit off there, man. Uh, they, <laughs> they are great. Uh, I'm going to actually, though, look in on the Orlando side of this game first. And... Uh, you know what? I'm going to start with Evan Fournier. 26 points, a steal, two assists, four rebounds, four threes on 7-7. Seven seven shooting eight of nine from the line this guy's been really good man he's been a surprise I think a lot of people were expecting late round value and he's been he's been pretty good so um, congrats if you got Fournier because you likely took him pretty late and he's definitely uh, killing his uh, where he got drafted Aaron Gordon you know scoring wasn't great tonight three of 12 from the field but let's look at the positive side 13 rebounds two assists a steal a block a three uh, so you know tough defensive matchup against the bucks for aaron gordon but uh i do like that he contributed in, in some of these other categories um markel fultz corbin I dropped mm -hmm. Markel Fultz at the beginning of the season after the first couple weeks when he was just putting up low end lines of like seven points with three assists and two rebounds. And I got to say, man, I regret mm -hmm. dropping him. I wish I hung tight with him. You know, one of my biggest flaws, Corbin, I try mm -hmm. to be really aggressive at the beginning of the season on the wire because I don't want to miss on these pickups. Guys like Holmes and Devontae Graham and um, and Daniel House, right? But by being so aggressive, I tend to drop guys too early. And Fultz is one of these guys, man. He had 13 points, mm -hmm. 9 assists. Five rebounds, one steal. Um, you know, not going to ever really wow. give you a lot of threes. Only shot 4 of 14, but I think this guy's going to improve as the season goes on. And uh, can, I, I, I wish that I hung on to Fultz. Um, I feel you, that, man. I totally do. Yeah. Now, we're still waiting for uh, Vucevic to come back. So, 
Birch is getting the start, but very low end from him. Uh, you know, I, I picked him up initially when Vucevic went down, but it just has not been going on with him or Mo Bamba, who only played 12 minutes tonight. So no one really to trust in that center spot until we see Vucevic guy back. But a big that you can trust is Jonathan Isaac. Now, didn't blow you away with the scoring tonight, but check out these stats. Five blocks. Um, Again, I'm pulling this off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure he's leading the NBA in blocks. And talk about, I think I said something earlier about a guy who's killing his uh, ADP where he got drafted. Jonathan Isaac is like a first round value right now what a stud man this is a guy next year i think we're gonna be drafting like that first second round turn or very beginning of the second round that's how good this guy is man um he also added two assists nine rebounds uh i don't even care that he shot five of 13 from the field this guy's Mm -hmm. locked and loaded congrats if you got jonathan isaac um Terrence Ross is the other guy that you could look to. 23 points and assists, four boards, four threes tonight on 8 of 14 shooting. It's a really good game from him. Um, you know, DJ Augustine, a nice game, 13 points, five assists, two steals. I I hope you don't have him rostered in standard leagues. Fultz is the guy you want to own there. And uh, not too much else to talk about. Aminu, again, is out. Vucevic is out. Hopefully we see... I, I've read some reports that Vucevic is getting close, so I think we see him back pretty soon. Corbin, what are your thoughts on the Magic? I mean, I'm in very much impressed with Jonathan Isaac. What a stat stuff for that guy is. Um, I was watching this game, and I'm just like, wow, three rounds there. Okay, two blocks there. I mean... I saw every one of those five blocks through this game um, because that's kind of the game I had my eye on. And it was it was really cool to see him mesmerizing and kind of watch the impact he brings. Well, like you said, while not really the biggest uh, hand offensively, just the destruction he was able to wreak on other ends was just amazing. So aside from that, not too much, except I'm right with you on Markel Fultz. I dealt with a, another guy, um, another good point guard who I gave him early. And I was like, you know what? It's going to be fine. You know, he's working his way back to form. It, it, it was Malcolm Brogdon. I don't even know what I was thinking. But this is why I'm, I'm pretty bad with the – I'm working on my fantasy end. Long story short, I regret that, and I am totally feel your pain on uh, Fultz. But um, I'm going to take it down to the Bucks side. One guy I do have on my team – and let me tell you, Adrian, I've been really working on uh, really sprucing up my fantasy game. I'm on so many different leagues, and I'm still trying to figure out how to get it right. The free ones because I'm trying to – you know, I know the an- analysis side, but the fantasy side is something I'm still really getting my hands on. I knew to get Giannis, and I'm glad I got Giannis. So – in 35 minutes, 32 points, 12 to 22 from the field, 2 of 5 from 3. Uh, you know his free throw shooting is going to be kind of the hit there. He was 6 of 12, which isn't the worst thing. But for the volume that he gets to the line, you would hope it's a little bit better. But, you know, that's where he's at. But check out these rebounds. 15 rebounds and 8 assists. 1 steal and 1 block. And only 2 turnovers. So he was a, just an efficient monster as he's been all season. Um, And just the points and, and rebounds and statistics he provided are just great. Um. Not to be undermined was a steady contribution by Chris Middleton in 20 points in only 29 minutes. 8 to 18 from the field, 4 to 10 from 3, 9 rounds, 4 assists to steal. And that was really it for him. Not too much of the rest of the starting five. Brooke Lopez with 9 on 3 of 7 from the field, 3 of 5 from 3. Only 3 rebounds, but 1 steal. But you know you're really getting for the 3-point shooting. He's so far away from the basket. He'll, you know, the rebounds are kind of hit and miss for him. Eric Bledsoe, 6 points, 3 and 9 from the field, 0 and 2 from 3. Eight rebounds, eight assists, so you got some value in other spots there. Wesley Matthews, six points, two of six in the field, two of four from three, one rebound, three assists, so not much, low volume, but got some three-point shooting again. Off the bench, three guys in double figures, Ursula La Silva with 11 points in 16 minutes, four or five from the field, two of two from three, one or two from the line, six rebounds and a block. Dante DiVincenzo with 10 points and, um, no, Dante DiVincenzo with 12 points in 20 minutes, Five of eight from the field, two of three from three, uh, two rebounds and an assist. And then George Hill with 10 points in 21 minutes, four or five from the field, one of two from three, one of one from the free throw line, three rebounds and one assist. So kind of steady contributions there and not really too much else. A couple missed threes from Corver and Connaughton. Uh, DJ Wilson didn't get any time. And that's really it for them. I guess I could mention Robin Lopez in 14 minutes, four points, two of eight from the field. Tried four threes, didn't really hit any of them. One rebound and two assists. But um, 
Adrian, what do you think about the Bucks and, and what's been going on with them recently? Well, I don't got much to add from a fantasy standpoint, man. You nailed it. I just want to say that this team looks really good. Uh, you know, I knew the Bucks were going to be good, but I, I mean, they might be my favorite to come out of the East as of right now uh, to go to the finals because, you know, not only are they so solid up front their starters they're pretty deep off the bench man they got like george hill divincenzo Ilya sova robin lopez connington corver they got a nice bench and now that you got a little depth they're playing well this team could really make a run at a finals this year so an outstanding team and man congrats on Giannis because man he must be I don't I don't have any shares of Giannis but I gotta say he's gotta be so fun to have on your fantasy team he just puts up these big popcorn stat lines and man it is outstanding uh great 25 years old man it's insane it's insane. It is insane. You said it. It's it's crazy how he just racks the muscle easily, too. And like everyone else says, and I feel obliged to say the same thing, if he gets a consistent three-point shot, look out, it's over. Whatever apocalyptic description you can describe to the NBA if Giannis gets that three-point shot. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's keep going. This is a – Corbin, we're going at a nice pace, man. This is perfect. Uh, I think awesome. the next game up is the Detroit Pistons – and the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, this, uh, man, I really love that we got some close games. I hate it when all the games are blowouts because it really is like tough to judge for fantasy what the lines are in blowouts. So another tight game here. Yeah. The Pistons getting the victory 105 to 103. Um, I'm going to look on the Detroit side of this game first. And, you know, surprisingly, not a lot of big lines here on the Detroit side. Blake Griffin with only five points, four rebounds. He only shot one of nine in uh, 34 minutes, uh, one assist, one steal. You know, uh, if you have Blake Griffin, I'm sure he's going to be much better in the, in the next one. So just shake it off. Um a guy who's been spectacular, Andre Drummond. But even for him, this feels a little disappointing. 13 points, 10 rebounds without a defensive stat. So this is kind of disappointing for Drummond. Now, he did shoot 5 of 6 from the line, so you love that he didn't hurt you there. Uh, 4 of 11 from the field. Uh, Kennard has been pr a pretty good surprise here on the year 14 points for him two assists three rebounds one three on five of 12 shooting from the field um let's see who else and you know bruce brown's a low-end guy uh i've seen i've seen him rostered in some like deeper 14 team leagues but in standard leagues i wouldn't touch him he had eight points two assists and seven boards tonight uh snell not really worth owning six points for him um a guy who is Derek rose even though he's coming off the bench He's really their best point guard option. Uh, happy that he's back and looks healthy. I mean, played 28 minutes here tonight, and the usage is great. Actually, took the most shots out of anyone on the Pistons team tonight. 9 of 17 for 21 points, 7 assists, 3 rebounds. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, Langston Galloway with 16 points, but, you know, I'm 20 minutes off the bench. Most nights, he's not going to be good and just give you a low-end line. Um, other than that, the last thing I'll mention, I really love Christian Wood, but in a backup off-the-bench role with minutes in the teens, mid to low teens, he's just really not going to be viable in standard leagues. But... If, if the Pistons decide to go into tank mode, if they decide to move some of their um, starter guys, guys like Drummond, guys like Blake Griffin, I will be running to the wire to pick up a guy like Christian Wood. Uh, I, think that's oh, yeah. all, I think that's all I got. What do you think of the Pistons? I mean, you nailed it on the Christian Wood talk. He has been such a stud. And to be honest with you, the NBA nostalgic guy in me was really hoping way back before the scene started when it was that final roster spot between Joe Johnson and Christian Wood that Joe would get it just because I wanted to see the good old days of, you know, the last relics of my uh, young, young childhood back in the league. But Christian Wood has been so, so solid. And like you said, an absolute stud. So uh, aside from that, not too much to add. Great Derrick Rose game. 
That's for sure, like you said. And Langston Galloway as well. Um, You know, you're getting some shooters coming around here, and it's kind of making up for a, a pretty bad Blake Griffin performance. But I guess when you have that well-rounded team effort, you don't got to like, worry about that too much. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to swing it on. Huh? Oh, yeah, my fault. I'm rushing the gun here. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. What went down on the uh, Pelicans' side of this game? Okay, so as a Lakers fan, I got to start with one of my favorite uh, – ex-Lakers, Brandon Ingram, who also had the big game for uh, New Orleans. 31 points in 37 minutes, 11 of 21 from the field, 4 of 9 from 3, 5 of 5 from the free throw line, 6 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steal, 4 turnovers, but he's been so solid this year. Um, I mean, I would have him. He's been especially solid from the three-point line on better volume than he shot in his career, so Really, really good for him offensively. Just one of the candidates for me as the most improved player. To say nothing of having on your fantasy spots and seeing him blossom into this offensive uh, force here. Uh, aside from that, you had another double-figure score in Drew Holiday. 20 points in 35 minutes. 10 of 21 from the field. 0 of 3 from 3. And 0 of 4 from the line. So the stroke was kind of hit or miss. Four re- six rebounds, five assists, two steals. Um, uncharacteristically bad as far as the free throw line conversion rate and kind of missing all his threes. But the, he wasn't the only shooter who was cold. Um, the coldest shooter would have been J.J. Redick, and not in a good way. Three points in 21 minutes, one of 10 from the field, one of eight from three, two rebounds, four assists. I mean, if J.J.'s not scoring or giving you threes, he's not really giving too much else. Um, so the four assists wasn't horrible, but, I mean, it was really just a bad night for him. No way to go around that. Jilla Loka four, nine points in 22 minutes, three or four from the field, three or three from, th- from the free throw line. Six rebounds and an assist. And then um, Kendrick Williams, who got the start at 32 minutes, two points, one of six from the field, 0 of five from three, eight rebounds, one assist, one steal, not too much there. Off the bench, uh, Josh Hart at 12 points, uh, five of 14 from the field, two of 10 from three, six rebounds and five assists. So at least he gave you some rebounds and some assists. And, you know, double-figure shooting is fine. Efficiency sucks, but, you know, you'll, you'll take what you can get. Uh, Nikhil Alexander, or Alexander Walker, three points in six minutes, not too much there. Lonzo Ball, six points in 30 minutes, seven rebounds, four assists. I would really love to see those uh, assist numbers go a little bit higher, just coming off the bench and not really giving you too much scoring, but you got what you got there. And then Jackson Hayes being the main contributor off the bench with 13 points in 21 minutes, four or seven from the field. Misses only three, but he was five or eight from the free throw line to go along with four rebounds and one assist, along with two steals and a block. So, really kind of got a little bit of everything from Jackson Hayes off the bench. But, Adrian, what do you think of these Pelicans? I mean, just in general, you know, 6-18, and 18, not a great team, and they're kind of waiting for Zion, and we kind of knew they weren't going to be a great team as this. But do you see any studs that you've watched kind of come out the lineup or anything you've been impressed by? Uh, I'm definitely impressed by Brandon Ingram. And, uh, oh, yeah. Corbin, I know you and I are going to get along well because I, too, am a Los Angeles Lakers fan, and uh, – and I'm I'm happy to see the success of Brandon Ingram and um, man, he's having an outstanding season. And I just you know the only thing I want to add you you pretty much covered everything is I, I really want to see Zion. I'm I'm just was hyped about Zion coming into the NBA, so I'm hoping that he comes back strong from this injury, and I hope he sets the league on fire, and I hope he helps this Pelicans team, because as you said, Corbin, uh, not really a great team from a reality standpoint, only 6 of 18, uh, 6 of 18 record for them, so um, I just can't wait to see Zion and see how he mixes in with this team because you know even though reality wise this team isn't doing good they do have some nice fantasy options with ingram and holiday um i think ball hopefully will get things going so um it's a pretty interesting team for fantasy yeah it definitely is (laughs) all right let's let's jump over to the next one the toronto raptors and the chicago bulls um, the whew, another tight game, man. A lot, right? a lot of these games tonight going down to the wire. Uh, the the Raptors getting the victory, ninety three to ninety two. I'm going to take a look at the Toronto side first. First thing I'm going to mention about Toronto is I got Van Vliet in like every single league. And so my fingers are crossed that this is a minor injury thing with Van Vliet. I think it's being called a knee contusion. So, uh, you know, I believe they're coming off of a back-to-back. So maybe they're just being cautious with him. Again, fingers crossed. Now, if Van Vliet 
does miss any time. It looks like Norman Powell could be your guy. He got the start, put up 17 minutes, two steals, three assists, four rebounds, one three on seven of 16 shooting. The usage is there. 16 shots is pretty good uh, for Powell. So if we hear Van Vliet's going to miss any more time, you can likely stream Powell. Uh, I'll say sp- uh, Pascal Siakam, 22 points, a steal, a block, one assist, six rebounds, two threes on seven of 18 shooting, six of eight from the line. You know, Siakam started red hot, so it feels like he's kind of kind of came down a little, cooled off just a little bit, but he's going to be just fine. If you have Siakam, of course, you're just going to keep him locked and loaded. Uh, Kyle Lowry, really happy to see this guy back. Uh I am slightly concerned. Lowry's an injury-prone player. 39 big minutes tonight coming off a back-to-back. So, uh, you know, this likely could be with no Van Vliet. Lowry's got to play some extra minutes. But, man, I really hope um, they don't, you know, uh, wear Lowry out too badly because there's we still got a lot of season left uh, to go. Um, Lowry had 11 points, 7 assists, 7 boards. He, you know, Shooting wasn't quite there. It was only 3 of 15, 1 3, but don't worry. Lowry should be just fine. Um, Mark Gasol, he's been a little disappointing, but I'll tell you what, tonight was a great night. Um, nine points, six defensive stats with two steals, four blocks, five assists, nine rebounds. Really just uh, contributing all over the board in this one. So I think if you've got Gasol, you're very happy with this line. Um, another guy that I like, he's been a little up and down of late, but I th- I would I would be happy if I had this guy in my roster. OG Ananobi, 10 points, and this is why I love him. Two steals, two blocks, two assists, five rebounds. It's just I, I just love another guy that kind of contributes all over the place, and I love that he gives you some defensive stats. Uh, four of nine shooting from the field for him, uh, and so a great game. Um, Serge Ibaka, you know, um, came off the bench for 19 minutes. Now did take 11 shots, only made three for 11 points, but gave you 14 rebounds. No defensive stats, but usually good um, in the block category. I think he's still viable in a lot of leagues. Maybe not shallow 10-team leagues, but um, for the most part, I think Ibaka could be owned. Uh, Nobody else that I really trust on this team. Hollis Jefferson was a nice streamer when Lowry was out and when they were missing some guys, but now that this team's kind of healthy, Hollis Jefferson, Chris Boucher, um, can't really tr- uh, Terrence Davis. We can't really trust any of those guys with the Raptors now uh, um, becoming healthy. Corbin, what do you think of the Raptors? Um, I mean, you broke it down pretty well. I mean, uh, Marcus Saul was kind of the highlight for me. Mm-hmm. I, I really, I really liked, like you said, a solid kind of number line all from him. Nine points. Six, you already mentioned the stat line, but just in general, just a really, really good line. So I have nothing else to add on that except that it's really good to see Marcus playing that way. And guess what? If you have him, you know, you really, really liked it. Mm-hmm. What went down on the, on the Chicago side of this game? Okay, let me run. Yeah, let me run over that. Um, Larry Markinen, we're going to start with him. Hasn't had the best year. 13 points, 5-14 from the field, 2-6 from three. One of two from the line, eight rebounds, one steal. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. As far as streaming him, I, I don't consider myself the authority on that. But I will say, I will say one thing, Adrian. I see that to you. But I will say, I mean, he hasn't had the best of years, so I wouldn't be too high on it. I mean, it's just been, it's been kind of a weird deal. I don't know if it's a lack of aggressive aggression or, or just inefficient in shooting. I mean, it's part of it, but it's kind of hard to figure that out. So. I'm going to let that go, but, I mean, in general, just not the best. It's good to see him shoot some more shots, though, uh, second on the team in attempts for the night. So that's at least somewhat reassuring. Wendell Carter Jr., 14 points in 25 minutes, 5 of 8 from the field, 4 of 5 from the free throw line, 6 rebounds and 3 assists. Solid game for him. Chris Dunn, not really great shooting in general. Oh, 3 points in 15 minutes, 1 of 8 from the field, 1 of 6 from 3. Three rebounds and uh, and an assist. So, you know, he also had five fouls. So, just not really a great game for him at all. Um, Zach Levine kind of really been the leading guy for the Bulls just in general. 20 points in 34 minutes. 6 to 18 from the field. 3 to 10 from 3. 5 to 7 from the line. 
11 rebounds, 6 assists, 1 steal, 1 block, a little bit of everything. He's been mostly solid this year. Efficiency hasn't been the best, but you know what? It, it, it's been a, it's been good for Chicago, Um, just having someone to kind of lead the way there. And uh, Tomas Tadaransky, 10 points in 38 minutes, 4 8 from the field, 2 of 6 from 3, 3 rebounds, 11 assists. You're getting some good assist numbers from him. Steady uh, shooting percentages. Uh, you kind of know what you're getting with him. Um, Off the bench... Daniel Gafford really led the way, 14 points in 20 minutes, 7-9 from the field, uh, 3 rebounds and an assist to go along with a steal and 3 blocks. Thaddeus Young, 5 points in 19 minutes, 2-3 or three from the field, 1-2 from 3 uh, to go along with 1 rebound and 1 assist. And honestly, that was it. Kobe White played 30 minutes, uh, did not really contribute much aside from 8 rebounds and 5 assists, which is pretty good, except that he went 0-7 from the field and 0-5 from 3. So if you're hoping for any points whatsoever, probably not the best night for you, but uh. Eight rebounds and five assists. You can't really complain there. Uh, it's been rough for Chicago, Adrian. But what do you see that you like from them? You know, I have to say, I know you mentioned Laurie Markkinen's rough start, rough start. But I gotta say, he has been playing better lately. And you know, even tonight, only went five of fourteen from the field. But uh, I think this is a guy. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know. I I want to say buy low on him, but. Um, I wouldn't be giving up anything of value. I just want to mention, if you have Laurie Marketing, I think brighter days are ahead. The other thing I want to mention is Chris Dunn has been a popular pickup in a lot of leagues. And, you know, tonight, foul trouble, 5,015 minutes. So if you see in deeper leagues, uh, 14 teams or deeper, if somebody is frustrated with Dunn and drop him. I think he could be worth a pickup. Uh, I think, you know, he, he's been play he was playing pretty good and, and the Chicago Bulls have been better with him in the starting lineup. Uh, that's about it. Other than that, Corbin, man, Bulls, it's, it's kind of ugly for Chicago. Um, um, and then, yeah, it's been rough. yeah, let's let's jump over to the next game. Let's talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Phoenix Suns. Uh, Phoenix Suns, um, have they've been kind of a surprise this year? Now, even though they're only ten and twelve, uh, I feel like they've played a lot better than how they looked last season. Uh, so a nice victory for the Suns, one twenty-five to one hundred nine. I'm going to look on the Minnesota side of this game first. I'm going to start with Cat Carl Anthony Towns, big double double, thirty-three points, ten. Re- I mean, I'm sorry, thirty-three points, fifteen rebounds, two assists, two blocks. A very efficient 12 of 18 from the field. He was 2 of 4 from downtown, 7 of 9 from the line. An outstanding game from Cat. Um, One of the best players in the league. I think he's top 3 on the player radar right now. Uh, 23 points for Wiggins. 2 blocks, 4 assists, 4 rebounds. 1-3 on 8 of 18 shooting. 6 of 7 from the line. Uh, Wiggins has been a pleasant surprise as well this season. Uh, I really like what I've seen from him. And, um, you know, a guy I picked up in some deep leagues didn't really have it going here tonight. Josh Okoji, 8 points, 2 steals, 2 rebounds. But I love that he's starting. I'm talking about deeper leagues. In standard or shallower 10-team leagues, you can probably just ignore Josh Okoji. But um, I'm in... Corbin, I'm in some deep leagues, like 16 teams and deeper. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I, I picked up a Koji, and uh, I'm excited that he's starting. Before this, put up two solid games in a row before this one. So I'm going to shake it off and hope that he bounces back in the next one. Um, Bob Cove, Robert Covington, he's been playing well tonight, though. Not his night. Only shot one of five for four points. And really surprising. Usually... Bob Cove is uh, one of these guys that can contribute all over, can contribute all across the board. But tonight was not one of those nights. No defensive stats, no assists, only two rebounds, not even giving you a three. So uh, a down night for Lord Covington. Uh, Jarrett Culver, six points, one block, one assist, six rebounds. This is low end from him. You know, uh, had foul trouble tonight. It only played 15 minutes due to five fouls. So stick with Jarrett Culver if you got him. I think this is a guy who is going to get better, kind of similar to Garland when I said could improve as the year goes on. I think Culver could be one of those guys where, um, you know, at the all-star break on could be a solid asset. But right now in standard leagues, tough to rely on Jarrett Culver, but a guy that I like on my roster in some deeper leagues. 
you know, even though Jeff Teague is coming off the bench, seeing 28 minutes is great. And I love that he can destroy the second unit of other teams. So 16 points for Teague, two steals, four assists, three rebounds, one three on six of 14 shooting. Love that the usage is still there. The fact that he took 14 shots is great. So uh, stick with Jeff Teague. Um, Other than that, man, not a lot else. What do you think of the Timberwolves, Corbin? I mean, again, we're just having that night. You broke it down really, really well. It was good to see a bit of a bounce back night from um, Cat, especially after uh, the loss to my Lakers. Sorry, I had to let that fandom shine there for a second. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, looking just had a big picture. They've been slipping a little bit and shooting from three has been rough. But uh, Jeff Teague has been on a tear as of late, especially since his move off the bench. And that's really been good for them. I think having some stability there, someone who can take some value shot making and a shot creation and kind of really kind of command that offense from that spot, especially with Wiggins and Towns doing most of the work in the starting lineup. So not much to add there, but I will bounce over to Phoenix um, and kind of start with the big gun here, Devin Booker, who has been just very good this year, but also 26 points in 36 minutes, 11 to 20 from the field, three to seven from three, only went to the line once, one or two, Three rebounds, or four rebounds, seven assists, but just been really solid this year, and the Suns have just been really, really surprising. So it's no coincidence that Devin Booker is playing more within himself, scoring, you know, a little less than what he normally would, but also way more efficient. Really good to see that. Ricky Rubio has been a big part of that in the backcourt. 16 points in 33 minutes. 6-16 six shooting, not great, but he did knock down both the threes he took. Also knocked down both the free throws he took to go along with four rebounds and 14 assists. So really led the way there. Uh, especially from commanding the floor. Kelly Oubre Jr., 24 points in 33 minutes, 8 of 15 from the field, 2 of 6 from 3, 6 6 from the line, 4 rebounds. He's been solid all year. Aside from a couple clunkers of the game, I think we can depend on him in some leagues as well just for some scoring, a couple rebounds, a little bit of everything there. Uh, not too much of the assists, but whatever there. Uh, Dario Saric, 20 points in a little bit of a revenge game in 32 minutes on 7 of 11 shooting from the field, 2 of 6 from 3. Four or five from the line, nine rebounds, one assist, and one block. And then Frank the Tank, six points in 10 minutes, two or four from the field, two or three from three, two rebounds, two assists, one steal. Aside from that, one steal, great things come in twos for Frank. So, solid to see that. Um, off the bench, got to go the young guy who led the way there. Well, first we'll go with the old vet. Aaron Baines, 12 points in 15 minutes, five of 10 from the field, two of seven from three, four rebounds, one assist. Good for a couple points, a couple rebounds. Shooting that three was high volume and, and making it a pretty decent efficiency. So that's solid for him. Uh, Got to go to Cam Johnson, 10 points in 26 minutes, four, eight from the field, two of six from three, five rebounds and two assists, a little bonus there. Mikel Bridges, nine points in 32 minutes, three of seven from the field, one of two from three, two of two from the line, eight rebounds, four assists, three steals, two blocks. Great game from him. Just a little bit of everything, like a poor man's Jonathan Isaac, as far as his contributions to the stat line there. And to be honest with you, not a whole lot else. So um, I'm going to ask you, Adrian, what do you think about this rising Suns team? Man, I I think the Suns have been a pleasant surprise. And I think Monty Williams is doing a great job there. And Corbin, we, I mean, they're missing a main piece in DeAndre Ayton, who yeah. we're, we're going to get back soon. So this team could get a lot better. And, you know, uh, one guy who I love Kelly Oubre I gotta say man I kind of missed the boat on this guy I didn't I I thought he would be good but I didn't think he would be this good man tonight 24 point effort with a nice line and he's just been rock solid all season really good team man with uh, you got your go-to guy in Devin Booker Ricky Rubio is like that perfect point guard role glue guy it's like this team looks really good man and then one last thing that I want to add um, I picked up Baines in some deeper leagues where I'm desperate for center help. I think, you know, Baines only saw 15 minutes coming back from a calf injury. I believe they said they're limiting his minutes. I think eventually he's going to be the guy, not Kaminsky. But do note, this is a short-term thing because when DeAndre Ayton comes back, Kaminsky and Baines are going to be dead in the water when DeAndre Ayton returns so yeah. um, but I, I did pick up Baines as a streamer in some leagues where I am desperate for some center help so I think Baines eventually they're going to ramp up his minutes he's going to be the guy that you want until the return of 
DeAndre Ayton. All right, Corbin, let's jump into the next game. Man, we are rolling along. This is nice. Uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder taking on the Utah Jazz. Uh, I actually laid down some money on this one because I thought the Jazz were going to beat the Thunder. And I lost some dough on this one, man. Oh, <laughs> Wait, you know what? I was thinking, Corbin. I was thinking the Thunder are coming off of a back to back. They got to fly into Utah where there's altitude. I knew Danilo Gallinari was going to miss one. I was like, this is going to be easy money. Utah Jazz victory. I was wrong, man. So anyways, the Thunder getting the victory 104 to 90. Thun and I'm going to check out the Thunder side of this game first. Shea Gillis Alexander, 20 points, two steals, three assists, six rebounds, two threes on seven of 20 shooting, four of six from the line. I've heard some people mention that they're disappointed in Shea Gills Alexander. I think this is another guy who's going to get better as the season goes on. And if at some point the Thunder decide to move on from Chris Paul, if they trade Chris Paul, we're going to see a major boost to uh, Shea Gillis Alexander's value. So if you have him, I would hang tight and uh, maybe even buy low because uh, I know a lot of people because they drafted him, his draft price was a lot higher than where he's sitting on the player radar right now. So I know a lot of people are a little disappointed. A guy who's been really good was very underrated coming into draft day, Chris Paul. You know, I saw him go pretty late in a lot of drafts. I'm talking like fourth round, but this guy's been great. Uh, 16 points, three steals, seven assists, four rebounds, just filling it up all over. A little disappointed he didn't have a three tonight. It was 0 of 4 from downtown, but shot 7 of 15. Still a pretty solid game from CP3. Um, Steven Adams, this is what I like. Double doubled. You know, the scoring, the usage a little low on the scoring side. Only 4 of 4 from the field, but 11 points, 13 rebounds, and this is what I love. Four blocks, four assists, shot 3 of 4 from the line. I'll take this line from Steven Adams. Um, Nader getting the start, 10 points, 2 steals, 1 assist, 3 rebounds, 2 threes. It's actually a decent line from Nader if you're streaming him in some really deep leagues. Um, getting the start, though, for Terrence Ferguson. So when Ferguson is back, Nader, uh, you know, likely just goes back to his bench role. Baisley getting the start, but I hope you're not playing him. Only 2 points for him. Did have 7 boards and a block, but... Um, you know, only shot O of two, so there's just zero usage there. A guy who's really nice. Actually, they got two guys that are nice off the bench. One, Dennis Schroeder, 27 points, two assists, uh, three rebounds, three threes on 11 of 21 shooting. The other guy I like off their bench is Nerlens Noel. Now, I <laughs> I am a little concerned that that <laughs> Noel is only now you know in this game only saw 17 minutes. And it seems like Steven Adams is starting to roll, but I would stick with Nerlens Noel. He still has value off the bench. Even in like a 20-minute roll, can flirt with the double-double and give you some blocks. So I really do like Nerlens Noel. Four points for him, four assists, six rebounds, one steal, one block. Um, so other than that, again, missing Danilo Gallinari in this one and nobody else that I really trust in this one. What do you think of the Thunder? I mean, you broke it down. They're such an interesting team, and I find them, especially from a fantasy perspective, because I think a lot of it depends on whether you're kind of giving Chris Paul a lot of minutes and giving some of these vets some time, uh, Dennis Schroeder being, you know, another one of those, not older vets, but just guys who would, you know, be getting more minutes or prominent minutes on a, on a more prominent team, or do you go with these younger guys and, and getting them more starts and prioritizing the development and how that impacts fantasy and the stats as well. So it's been really interesting. I think you did a great job, man. Um, I, I find it Definitely intriguing to watch Shea Gilgis Alexander's development and also see how he impacts the box score. Um, Darius Baisley's been interesting to me. And Nerlens Noel has had a renaissance year just kind of quietly um, for the Thunder, uh, just in how he's been playing with some more freedom and some more minutes to really rehabilitate his value just in general. So it's been really solid there. Um, unfortunately, I am so disappointed by the Utah Jazz, who, I, I mean, as a Lakers fan, I, I always root for my team, but I really have the Jazz as being a really scary team this year and at 13 11 they weren't and i guess i'm gonna run through some of the reasons why just through the box score um one donovan mitchell getting points but getting them with the easy uh the easy variety let's just say that 26 points 
on 25 shots, 10 to 25 from the field, one to eight from three. Rough, just just rough shooting for him. Um, he did go to the free throw line. He was five and five from there with six rebounds and three assists. So at least you got some value there. And the points, uh, you know, they mean something. Um, but just in general, that efficiency is horrible. Uh, Rudy Gobert played well, 19 points, nine and ten from the field, uh, 17 rebounds, one assist. Uh, this won't show up on the uh, box score breakdown, but he got totally bamboozled by a CP3 uh, pass fake that had him spinning around, running the other direction as Chris Paul was rising up for about an elbow jumper. So, I mean, that won't show up, but I'm going to give him a mark for that because that's just foul. Um, Joe Ingles not had the greatest year. Nine points on in 34 minutes, three of seven from the field, three of six from three, four rebounds, eight assists, three steals. So giving you some value of rebounds and, and being a playmaker. But just finding his shot has been rough this year, although he has come up a little bit of late. It's just not been a great shooting year for him. Royce O'Neal has been even worse, at least for this game. Uh Zero points in 26 minutes, 0 with 6 feet in the field, 0 with 3 from 3, 2 rebounds and 3 assists to go along 1 steal. So, you know, that's really it for him. And then Bojan Bajanovic, 13 points in 2 minutes, 4 of 17 from the field, yikes, 3 of 7 from 3, 2 of 3 from the line, 5 rebounds, 1 steal, and that is all they wrote for the starting 5. Off the bench, not really a whole much else to kind of con- contribute there. George, George Niang. Seven points, three of seven from the field, one of four from three, three rebounds, and that was it. Especially since Rudy Gobert's been there, his minutes have kind of gone down. Same with Tony Bradley; he only he only got three um three minutes, but six points. So you know, probably garbage time. Um, and there is not a whole lot else to report on the bench uh at all. So I'm gonna throw it over to you, Adrian. What do you think about the Jazz? They have been in a major slump as of late, and I'm starting to be concerned. Man, I love your take on Donovan Mitchell. This is a guy who I was overly high on last year I overdrafted him burnt me so I avoided him this year I just uh was nervous about Donovan Mitchell and you know even though um still gonna have some big scoring lines and whatnot tonight is a night why I looking at his line tonight reminds me that I'm happy that I just kind of faded him on draft day um, I do want to mention they're missing Mike Conley. So, I, you know, even though Mike Conley's not this mega stud anymore, yeah. but still a good defensive point guard. And so, you know, it, it definitely hurts them missing a guy like that. And uh, I agree with you, Corbin. Sure. Like, I thought Utah Jazz, you know, when they added Mike Conley, when they added Bogdanovich, they kind of strengthened up their bench with guys like Jeff Green. I really thought that they would be a powerhouse in this Western Conference, so I'm really surprised uh, to see them at 13-10 and 10 right now. So, I don't know. You know, still fairly early in the season. I think we're rolling into week 8 right now, so still a lot of time for the Jazz to turn things around. Corbin, yeah, definitely so. Yeah. Corbin, we got one more game, but it's still going down. So I think we're going to get out of here for now. I'm going to return to do this last game solo. Corbin, I got to say, man, this is the first show I did with you. That was a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to uh, talking to you every Monday night. That was great, man. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to be awesome, Major. I'm very much looking forward to it. It's going to be a blast with you, man. And, um, I'm hyped. Thank you. This, uh, this is awesome. Well, Corbin, w- anything you want to plug? Where or where can the listeners find you at? Do you got are you on Twitter? You got a Twitter handle that they can hit you up at? Yep, I keep it pretty simple at Corbin MBA. So C O R B A N and then M B A because you know I'm basic and uh, that's really it. Got some stuff here of hoop ball and uh, finding any other work and any other pods I'm really on. That's kind of my thing and uh, that's it. Uh, thanks a lot, Adrian. Again, this is awesome. I'm looking forward to meeting with you every Monday having the dream team here. Well, even coach, but me as the alternate. <laughs> Great stuff, man. Uh, you know, I think, unfortunately, I think we've lost coach on Monday night. I think, man, his plate is so full right now. He is the DFS mm. master going full time with the DFS stuff. I think he's got a, a daily pod amongst other things. So, Corbin, I think it's going to be it. you and me holding down the fort on Mondays. I'm really excited about it. We're going to get the listeners off to a hot start to get the week going so i'm pretty excited about it man that was great stuff uh you guys thank you so much for listening and supporting the show uh i will be back for the final game the memphis grizzlies taking on the golden state warriors as of right now i think we're still in the third quarter there so uh i'll wrap that one up on my own corbin 
thank you again and uh i'm looking forward to talking to you next week man definitely man thank you awesome all right guys i will be back in a little bit Okay, I'm back for the final game of the evening. The Memphis Grizzlies taking on the Golden State Warriors. Um, the Grizzlies getting the victory in this one, 110 to 102. I'm going to take a look at the Memphis side of this game first. Uh, going to have to start with Ja Morant. Very happy to get this guy back um, into my fantasy lineup, and he did not disappoint uh, 26 points for him seven assists two rebounds one steal three threes on eight of 14 shooting seven of eight from the line this is a really nice game um for jaw really happy he's back let's hope that um he can stick into this lineup um Next guy up I want to talk about is uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. After a pretty rough start to the season, he's really starting to come around. A beautiful line from him tonight. 16 points, 3 blocks, a steal, 2 assists, 3 rebounds, 2 threes. Um, you know, he shot 6 of 14 from the field, but... Um, I just love the defensive effort in this one, and uh, I think he's starting to trend upwards, and uh, I hope he keeps that up. Dylan Brooks with a nice game, 17 points, 2 steals, 2 assists, 3 rebounds, 3 threes on 6 of 12 shooting. Jonas Valanciunas with a nice double-double, 13 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, Two of two from downtown, five of seven from the field. Uh, he went one of three from the line. So with your starters back in the lineup, John Morant, Jonas Valanciunas, um, really tough to rely on some of these guys we may have been streaming, like Tyus Jones, DeAnthony Melton. Uh, these guys likely should be dropped uh, pretty much all over the place. Uh, with Jaw now back, um, you know Hill. You know Hill still saw 30 minutes off the bench, but um, only shot one of seven for three points, three steals, three assists, one block. And I think we can, in standard leagues, I think you can pretty much um, leave him alone. That's about it for Memphis. Let's jump over on the Golden State Warriors side of this game. You know, D'Angelo Russell had a really bad shooting night. 6 of 22 for 18 points. Did add a steal, 7 assists and 3 rebounds and 4 threes. Shot 2 of 4 from the line. Draymond Green had a nice one. Um, 16 points, 3 blocks, a steal, 5 assists, 3 rebounds, 1-3 on 6 of 13 shooting. He was 3 of 4 from the line. You know, I think if Draymond can string together a few more games, I a few more quality games, I would be trying to uh, move him if possible. Um, Glenn Robinson, 4 points, 3 steals, 8 rebounds, um, only shot 2 of 7. And, uh, you know, he's a really low-end guy. Um, maybe even in standard leagues, not even rosterable in, like, shallower 10-team leagues should be left on the wire. But um, I know I have him in some deeper leagues and um, hoping for better lines. Uh, Willie Cauley-Stein, 17 points, 2 blocks, 1 steal, 2 assists, 8 rebounds. A really nice game from him. Um I think it's going to be tough to rely on him on most nights with, um, you know, they're with Draymond back with them, hopefully ramping up moon, minutes for Looney. Although Looney only saw 10 minutes. I'm curious if Willie Colley Stein could still be viable um, with, you know, Looney hopefully on the rise and this team kind of becoming more healthy. Um, I don't know if we could trust Willie Colley Stein in standard leagues. Another guy, Pascal, only shot two of ten for five points here tonight and uh, one block. Tonight is one of those nights why, you know, the floor is fairly low for uh, Pascal. 
Burks had a nice game off the bench. In 30 minutes, he got 18 points, three steals, six assists, seven rebounds. And, you know, somebody in in deeper leagues that probably should be rostered because of the potential to have nights like he had tonight. And really love that he saw 30 minutes off of the bench. Uh, Kai Bowman, I think he's a drop in most standard leagues with D'Angelo Russell back. But in deeper leagues, I'm still holding him because I'm curious if D'Angelo Russell gets moved or, you know, they decide I would not be surprised if D'Angelo misses more time um, due to whatever minor injury. Um, so Kai Bowman, I think, is a guy who could still stick on some rosters in some deep leagues. Uh, I'm not, I don't trust Marquise Chris or Spellman and um, nobody really else here. Pretty ugly for the Golden State Warriors, but um, we'll see how it goes. All right, you guys, thanks again for listening and for supporting the show. Uh, I want to thank uh, Corbin again for um, his help on the show earlier. Had a really great time talking to him. Hope you guys had a good night for fantasy, and I hope um, you guys are doing all right in your leagues um, heading into this week. And uh, thanks a lot, you guys. We'll talk to you later. This has been a Hoop Ball presentation.